Hi, and welcome to another instalment of our regular tips and tricks episodes. In this tutorial, we'll address a question we get asked often. How do you scatter items on a vertical surface? We'll demonstrate how this is done using a common usage, the creation of green walls, and though this is a specific example, the same principles can easily be used whatever it is you'd like to scatter. We'll also be looking at how to use coloured maps and paint planting patterns, as well as looking at an automatic clustering feature that creates a similar effect without the hassle. So there are actually two ways to create vertical scatters. First of all, for simple planar areas, you can simply rotate the forest object. Or secondly, for more complex surfaces, you can use UV mode to scatter on any arbitrary shape. Let's start by first taking a look at how to scatter on vertical planar surfaces, which has the advantage of retaining all of Forrest's features, including edge mode, spline painting and much more. The most important thing to understand is how to orientate the axis of the Forrest object, the surface and the scatter geometry. Forest Pack expects the local z-axis of the surface and Forest Pack's local z-axis to be aligned. Any deviation from this and you'll start to encounter issues. In normal usage, if you create a new forest pack object by selecting a surface, it will inherit the transformation matrix of the selected object. In this case, the correct alignment is automatic, but only if the surface's coordinate system is already oriented correctly, with the local z-axis perpendicular to the plane. You can see this is the case for this surface if you change the reference coordinate system to local. And if you delete the surface from the surface list, you can see from the forest logo that it's aligned to the surface object. If, however, your forest object is not aligned correctly with the surface, perhaps, say, because you've already created it or you're duplicating an existing forest object, then the easiest way to orientate it correctly is to use the Align tool, making sure that the Align Orientation Local checkboxes are enabled for all three axes. One thing to make clear is that just because the axes must be aligned doesn't mean that the geometry itself must be perfectly flat. It can, of course, bend and undulate. But the axes must remain aligned even if the geometry does not. Surface normals should also face towards the forest object, otherwise they'll be ignored. And that's it for surfaces, but what about splines? Well, the good news is that splines are a little bit easier. If you're using spline areas, then you only need to worry about the orientation of the forest object. The splines axis is not at all relevant. Forest projects items along the z-axis to fill the spline area, using the closest vertex to define the location of a flat plane. And that's it. But also important is the alignment of the objects you are scattering. Let's take a look at the plants for our green wall. Obviously they have a particular way they must hang, it wouldn't work if the leaves were drooping upwards or sideways. So Forest uses their orientation in world space to align them to the forest object's local axis. So world X equals forest X and world Y equals forest Y. Therefore, to align correctly when applied to the wall, the plant should hang down the Y axis as shown in the scene. This has the added benefit of enabling you to use enable horizontal mirroring to get a little bit more variety from your models. So we've covered the basic principles of alignment. Let's put them into practice and make a green wall. In this first section, we'll focus on the basic setup and adding variety. We have to be a little more careful than usual when randomizing these objects because they need to stay hanging in roughly the correct direction. Normally you can just turn on the rotation randomization and be done with it, but this will result in some of the plants drooping upwards or sideways, which clearly isn't right. The trick is to carefully limit randomization within a sensible range, keeping in the back of your mind how the items align with the forest object's local axis. But before we do that, we need to create a new forest object. So, create a new forest object by selecting the surface. As we discussed earlier, the surface's axes are already correctly aligned, so the forests will be automatically aligned correctly too. To add the plants, go to the geometry rollout and click add multiple. This saves you from having to add items one at a time and it can be a huge time saver. Pick the green wall models and then click add. When you're done, don't forget to delete the original default item or you'll be left with a billboard in the scatter. Green walls are usually planted in a regular dense grid-like fashion. To achieve this, go to the distribution map rollout and change the type to full. Then adjust the density value until there are no gaps between the plants. About 2,400 centimeters works well for this scene, but you can judge it by eye. Now we're ready to add some randomization. So go to the transform rollout and turn on translation. 
This will allow you to slightly break up the grid for a more natural appearance, but not too much. Minus 5 to 5 works well for the X and Y axis, but I'll try higher values like minus 30 to 30 for the Z axis to create the illusion that plants protrude different distances from the wall. And scale will help here too, so turn this on and experiment with the settings. I found that 85% to 140% worked well. Turn on rotation too. This time we need to be careful not to rotate the objects too far so that they're defying gravity. For the Z and Y axis, minus 30 to 30 looked about right. But for the X I went for minus 10 to 30 to make sure the plants didn't stick straight out of the wall. And then finally, as we mentioned earlier, you can turn on Enable Horizontal Mirroring to randomly flip the plants over the Y axis to create more variety and hide visible repetition as much as possible. If you render this now, you should have a nice chaotic green wall. So now we have a green wall with a random distribution of plants. If you like, you can adjust the composition of these plants by changing the probability values in the geometry rollout. But what we're really interested in is creating patterns. Green walls are rarely random. Often plants are grouped together into clusters using a specific planting plan. Forest allows you to do this by following these steps. First of all, you'll need to create a map that illustrates the planting plan. In this scene I have four species of plants, so I've used the same number of colours and created a coloured bitmap for the pattern in Photoshop. Each colour relates to one species of plant, and for clarity I've used red, green, blue and magenta, but you can use any colours at all. With your map done, go to the distribution rollout and turn on Diversity Match Colour ID on Bitmap. This feature allows you to place items by matching their colour IDs to these colours painted in Photoshop. Click on the map slot and add this bitmap from the scene files for the tutorial, or if you prefer, you can always paint your own. But what are colour IDs? Well to find these, you go to the geometry rollout. When you select each plant, you'll see that it has a randomly assigned colour ID shown here. To see these in the viewport, you can go to the display rollout and turn on Use Colour ID. We want to group together plants of the same type by assigning them the same colour so that they'll be distributed in the same region of the map. To do this, go back to the geometry rollout and select the two green wall one plants and change their colour ID to red. Change the next two plants above this to blue. Then change green wall three's colours to green and change the remaining two to magenta. Of course you can change these colours around to get different plants on each section. You'll now notice in the viewport and when you render that these items are now distributed according to the map. You should note though this is a new feature of Forest 5. In previous versions only one item could be assigned to each colour group and any others with the same colour value were ignored. So if you're using versions before Forest Pack 5 you'll get a similar effect but with less variety. If you prefer something a little more interactive, it's also possible to paint the pattern onto the surface directly in 3ds Max. To do this, select the surface and open Viewport Canvas. Click on the Paint button. You'll be asked to assign a material and which map you wish to paint. In this example, we'll paint a diffuse map. Next, choose a save location and resolution and you're ready to start painting. But first we need to assign the same map to the forest object. So open the material editor and pick the material assigned to the surface. Next select a forest object and instance the diffuse map to the forest objects distribution diversity match colour ID on map slot. Often it is also easier to see the surface you're painting on if you change the display mode from points cloud to thin box. And now with this set up we can go back to selecting the surface. In Viewport Canvas again, use the Paint tools to create your design. Here we'll paint a little bit of red on the left, followed by a stripe of green, and then blue, and then magenta. To see these changes reflected in Forest Pack, just deselect the tool. This writes the image to disk and updates the distribution. Any time you want to see Forest updated, just deselect the tool and it will update instantly. This is a great way of interactively painting your own maps without having to jump out to Photoshop. And unlike spline painting, this technique is also suitable for use when you're using UV mode. It can be really helpful for painting many other types of map, including distribution and transform maps. 
If a wall is substantially deformed or faces in multiple directions, you may need to use a different approach that scatters objects using the surface's UV channel. With this technique, the axis alignment of the forest object and the surface are not important, but the source object should be oriented exactly as described before. This is important because now the XY axis of the scatter objects will be aligned to the UV axis of the surface's texture space. To illustrate how this approach works, we'll apply our green wall to a curved corridor. In the scene files for this tutorial, unhide the layer called Corridor Scene. This is the geometry that we'd like to add a green wall to. These models were originally created with our sister plugin RailClone, and they're all fully parametric and driven by a single spline. As you can see, moving the spline affects the roof, floor and walls, so it's really great for rapid iteration. There's also a separate, non-renderable object called RC Forest Surface that we'll use as the surface for our green wall. If you turn on the UV Checker Material Override, you'll see that the U-axis is aligned horizontally and the V-axis is vertical. This will make sure that the hanging plants are correctly aligned because as we mentioned, the XY space of the items matches the UV space of the surface. Actually this surface is also a rail clone object and it allows me to parametrically adjust the spacing around the doors so that the plants don't intersect. If you don't have rail clone though, don't worry, any geometry is valid and you'll find collapsed versions of these models in the RC forest surface collapsed layer. Now let's add our existing forest object to this wall. Select the forest object and open the surfaces rollout. Delete the existing surface, click the add button and then select RC forest surface. If you want to update forest automatically if the surface changes, you can also turn on auto, but for complex surfaces be aware that this can affect performance. Still in the surfaces rollout, change the mode to UV and you'll now have a green wall inside your corridor. You may find you need to adjust the density slightly. If that's the case, go to the distribution rollout and edit the density value until it looks right. Earlier we used maps to create the patterns. In this example we'll do something slightly different. Forest Pack has a clustering facility that can be used to group together items. Just like the map matching technique described earlier, this feature groups together plants using their colour IDs, but this time it does it automatically using an algorithm with several controls for size, shape, noise and blending. It can be really helpful for quickly creating green walls and other patterns without the need to hand paint a map and it's particularly suitable when you need to create the illusion of planting plans but you don't actually require a specific pattern. Here's how it works. Open the distribution rollout and change diversity mode to clusters. You'll see in the viewport immediately a non-tiling clustering arrangement of the plants. You can now change the size and the roughness of clusters as well as whether they're clearly defined or bleed together using the blurry edge property. If you want to, you can randomly distribute a few rogue plants in the middle of a cluster, and you do this using the noise parameter, though it's better suited for wild planting where this is more likely to occur than a man-made green wall design like this. And that's done. If you're using the rail clone version, you can now adjust the spline in the whole corridor, including the green wall, will update, making this a really flexible and intuitive system. So with our scene finished, we can now hit render and see how it looks. In this tutorial, we focus on green walls, but the same principle can be applied any time you need to scatter on a vertical or arbitrarily oriented surface. We also looked at a couple of really useful diversity features that have a huge range of applications for randomising clusters or for creating and painting very specific patterns. Until next time, if you'd like more information about surfaces and diversity, please see our reference section. Or if you'd like more training, please visit the tutorials page for more tips and tricks videos and in-depth tutorials.